Hello everyone, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. So today we're talking about the day before again. Seemed like an open and shut case, but here we are. So for context, the day before was this MMO survival shooter similar to The Division. And they overpromised with a lot of features within the game. We're not talking about a big budget game like from Ubisoft or Epic Games or Microsoft. We're talking about an indie studio was promising the world. And essentially what the game released in was a terrible state over the time of the game's development they would release promotion material that was clearly lifted from other sources like the division and call of duty black ops even life is strange they were overusing um pre-bought assets which is fine a lot of people use pre-bought assets but the amount they were using seemed rather suspicious the gameplay trailers they released were a massive downgrade which is expected vertical cut trailers tend to showcase the game in a very lavish state that doesn't represent the final product like what happened with Anthem or Aliens Colonial Marines or the infamous Puddle Gate for Spider-Man but yeah but it just didn't line up and then eventually the game launched and it was a terrible experience it was rife with issues they completely scrapped the MMO part of the game it was a zombie extraction shooter and not much of it the game was marred with many technical issues I personally played the game it was just terrible all throughout and when the game crashed it would literally say unreal survival game so it was a disaster. Then a few days later, they came out with this statement stating that Fantastic, the developers behind the day before, would essentially be closing their doors. And a lot of people were like, yep, that makes sense. And a lot of people wanted their money back, naturally, because it was a $40 early access game, which a lot of people knew what they were doing there. They were trying to hide behind the curl early access veil so they can make justify the massive bugs within the game. Then after which the... Uh, well, the publisher stated that they would give refunds to everyone who purchased the game, regardless of playtime, but a lot of people assumed Valve is the one who stepped in and was just like, yeah, we know what you're doing here, and to avoid any type of legal issues, they probably said, refund everyone, or we're going to step in, and it's not going to be pretty. Again, that's my conspiracy, but I doubt that Valve wouldn't have taken a step forward, considering how monumental this game is. It was very notorious. A lot of people knew what was going on, so I honestly assume that valve did step in it's never been confirmed but it wouldn't uh, surprise me if they did then people tried to sell keys on the black market to uh, you know capitalize on this game shutting down and no one being able to buy the game because after they were refunding the game they took it off for sale but then the, st the servers shut down as of now. They took a month before they shut down the servers. But yeah, the servers have been completely shut down as of now. So if you're one of these idiots who bought these Steam keys, uh, you're a complete bozo. But, I mean, there were people who were spending thousands of dollars in order to get Flappy Bird on their phone. Because when that game was taken down off the marketplace, people were selling their phones for like two, three thousand $3,000 with the game installed. Again, there are idiots out there, so whatever. So right now, the day before has been completely taken down. You can see the website is for sale right now, so if you want it. But there was a terrific article by Dual Shockers who interviewed a variety of employees under NDA, which uh, they were anonymous, but they showcased that the game was never meant to be an MMO. The brothers who headed the company basically would just play games and then say, okay, we played Resident Evil 2. We want this to be a survival horror game. And frankly they also lifted assets from resident evil 2 and mimicked it uh gta they would play that and then say oh no now we want it to be this grand open world and they would basically use their position of power to exploit their workers people were basically under a microscope and at any time you could be terminated by them if they just didn't like you which just sounds like a very pleasant way to run an office regardless yeah you can see here anyone who complained too much was kicked off the team so I already covered this article and you can even see the Resident, this is from the day before, not Resident Evil 2. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if a lot of people mistook that, but regardless, yeah. So I already covered this article, but the reason I'm going in depth, I know I set up a very large amount of information, is because they recently came out and stated there was a lot of misinformation about the product and it prevented them from literally making the game better. Granted. A couple of days after the game's launch, there was a patch that improved the server stability, but it was still a turret. You can decorate a turret as much as you want. You can have the most flies. You can put gold around it, flowers. It's still a turret. But yeah, 
So this is what they released, and it's so utterly obtuse and gaslighty that you just read this and you're like, what the fuck were they thinking when they released this? I, like, it's just, it's a done thing. Just go away. It's done. Nothing you say will ever make this okay. So this is what they wrote. And remember, these are the people who wrote when someone complained about the game's development, shit happens. So we're looking at that level of professionalism. Look, I always mock PR statements for what they are, but at least they are honest about what they're doing. They're trying to be as civil as possible. But in this way, (laughs) they're just acting like a petulant child at this point. Recently, a lot of misinformation has emerged on the internet from supposedly anonymous sources. Fantastic provides an official response to these statements. So this is the article from Dual Shockers that they are basically attacking at this point not to mention youtubers and people like that but i really think it's this article that they're going into anonymous people allege that we deceived players we worked hard and honestly on the game for five years we didn't take a penny from users like they keep harping on this we didn't take a penny from users so what just because you took no pre-orders doesn't mean after the game launched you didn't take money from players you did like that's what like after the product release you're on the line for that didn't use crowdfunding and didn't offer pre-orders like i said that doesn't matter now you still took people's money after the game launched and i'm pretty sure if valve or the publisher again didn't step in and offer to give refunds to people this would have been way worse (laughs) so yeah Even after the game we closed, we, together with the publisher, returned to all players, including forcibly issuing refunds to those who did not request them. So you basically forced people to take their money, get their money back? Well, that's not suspicious at all. Oh, you can't sue us. We gave you back your money. (laughs) I don't know if that would stand. I'm not a lawyer, but would that stand up in court? Like if you force someone to take back their money? That just seems so strange. I've never heard of this. How many companies return money like that? Oh my god. <laughs> How many companies return money like dude, this is like it's written by a pe- like it is written by a petulant child. I can only imagine that one of the brothers wrote this and they were just like he read the other brother read this and it's like, yeah, this is good. We should publish this. <laughs> we not we are not a fly by night company. We have been operating since 2015 and have always conducted our business honestly. Really, what about that um, Zoom-like video uh, call app that you promoted during the day before whole promotion period? Like, (laughs) Cura TV actually did a really good video on that. I'll link that below. But basically, that this video call service that they were promoted alongside the day before because everyone just wanted to know about the day before. Same thing with that game Prop Night. Like, they wanted to know about the day before, and then they promoted Prop Night, which carried the game to success because it was basically latching on to success of a game that people wanted. Anonymous people alleged that we deceived the investor. This is not true. We still have a great relationship with our publisher. The closure of the day before did not affect our partnership. Since 2021, we have had a New Zealand venture called Mitosis Fantastic and a successful game, Prop Night, which sold almost a million copies. Prop Night has also co-financed the development of the day before. Yeah, but you promoted that game by using the day before because you knew that game would never stand on its own. Anonymous former employees tell different stories about the development. We're unsure whether these employees are real or not. Well, there you go about the gaslighting. But we had an excellent relationship with our team despite being a small indie company with a limited budget. We insisted employees with relocation and healthcare. Didn't you uh, promote that video calling app because it was so well done to remote, uh, to encourage people for remote work? Like that's the whole reason you did that video call service that you highlighted hey we have people around the world who work on the day before (laughs) some of them uh, some of them to buy equipment and with their mortgages and other personal matters wait what we assist the employees with relocation and health care and help some of them to buy equipment and with their mortgages and other personal matters wait why the fuck would you give them money for their mortgages that makes no sense What, what the hell are you talking about and to buy equipment well shouldn't the company like purchase the equipment that they need in order to do their job like isn't that mandatory we offered an extra non-working day off for each month vacation pay and timely salary payments dude what the 
along with uh, optional uh, along with the option of working remotely yeah there you go why would they need to relocate if they can just work remotely like wh who the fuck would move to another place when they could just work at home like that just seems very counter like uh, counterintuitive our low churn rate and the fact that half of those who left returned to the company demonstrate our positive work environment weren't they mostly volunteers 100% of the team did everything they could to make the day before successful. Man, this is just like gaslighting as it's highlighted. It's just like, if there was more gaslighting in this, I'm pretty sure carbon monoxide would be uh, coming out of my screen. Who made money on the day before? Certain bloggers made huge money by creating false content with their huge titles from the beginning to gain views and followers exploiting the lack of information about the game's development. I'm pretty sure they're talking about like Callum Uptum and Cure TV. You might as well use their name at this point. Like I find it disgusting when people say, how dare you make a video? You did this just for money. Well, yeah, people often do things for money and if they their livelihood is content creation of course they're going to do it for money it doesn't make the report any less genuine like do you think a journalist will just do something out of the goodness of their heart no they need to get paid because you know we need money to survive like i hate when people use this argument oh well he's getting paid to do this well of course he's getting paid to do that he needs money she needs money what do you think they're going to survive on the goodwill of the community <laughs> their actions triggered a gold rush among certain co among content creators due to the game's pre-release popularity how much money do you think these people made like i do youtube professionally i make money off this you don't make jack shit on uh, ads like let's just put that for what it is unless you're like within the top million sub channels or have a high retention rate like say 90 percent you don't get a lot of rpm like for example my channel my main channel is a tourist channel I do walkthroughs and guides. People watch one or two walkthroughs and guides. They probably sub and they never watch my channel again. Like that's what my channel does. I just do guides and walkthroughs. And I can tell you right now, you don't make a lot of money off ads. You make money through sponsorships. A lot more people do. I have never gotten a sponsorship, but yeah. So this is completely bunk because I have personal experience on this. So there is no gold rush. It's uh, like maybe fool's gold, but not gold. What the fuck are you talking about? Why do they say that the game released is not the same as that in the trailers? And why was the game closed? We implemented everything shown in the trailers. Not true. From home improvements and detailed ward to off-road vehicles. Um, I guess that's true. But no, you did not implement everything shown in the trailers. Where is that huge scene from the game where the character goes into a building and there's a horde of zombies? In fact, one sec, I'll probably splice this in. Okay, they said that they implemented everything from the trailers. Where's this? Uh, let me put on the uh, desktop volume. Into pieces. Whew, that was close. You should have seen this shit. It seems he dodged a bullet. Now he's crafting a bandage so he doesn't die from bleeding. Hey, are you upstairs already? Yeah, this never happens in the game. I can tell you from experience. Psst, where are you? So this whole idea of proximity voice alerting zombies and infected. Yeah, that's not there either. Let's skip a little ahead. Yeah, this is not here either. <laughs> so you can tell, like, a, that is a 100% fallacy. Like, fuck you. Remember the experiment where you're asked to count pink objects in a room and then recall the blue ones? You won't remember any. It's all about focus. A negative bias instilled by certain bloggers making money on hate-affected perceptions on, on of the game. Again, this is like the most, like, a weak straw man argument out there. How dare you make a video? You're doing this just for popularity and for attraction. Dude, just shut up. Like, you're just using this to try and flip the blame with just nonsense arguments. Look at the unbiased gameplay like Dr. Disrespect Stream. <laughs> oh my god. That made me laugh. Like, unbiased gameplay like Dr. Disrespect. 
they're just calling out the doc man oh my god Despite the initial bugs and server issues, he liked the game, which we fixed later and the game received improved reviews over the weekend. Unfortunately, the hate campaign already ins inflicted significant damage. Dude, um, I don't know if Doc actually liked the game or not. I barely watch his streams anymore, but regardless, the fact they're throwing him under the bus. Look, this very popular streamer, Dr. Disrespect, liked the game. Why don't all of you like the game? Everyone who uh, hated on the game are just doing this for payment they're making about a penny per thousand views <laughs> there you go <laughs> by the way after the sales closed many people wrote to us that the bloggers had deceived them and like and they liked the game ah. <laughs> and they asked for access we heard that petitions were created to continue development and on the black market the game's price exceeded two hundred dollars and some even began to work on their own mods dude of course oh. Oh my god. Like, my brain is about to be fried about the stupidity of this entire thing. Who the frick approved this? We are grateful to all the senders and males who express support and appeal to not give up and continue work. Finally, we encourage you to subscribe to our social networks to keep up with what happened next. Didn't you guys close down? What do you mean, what happened next? You guys are done! What? What's next? What, you're gonna open a studio with the A in the title now? <laughs> like, what the hell are these people talking about? First off, there's no way to verify these two last paragraphs. Two, there's always gonna be an audience for everything. No matter how crappy something is, there's always gonna be people who are there to defend something because they don't wanna feel like they're wrong. People will 100% back something even if they're in the wrong just because it would hurt their pride and they or they will have to admit fault or they even like the game there are people who like crap there are people who like duke nukem forever like there are people like this so what the hell are you talking about look at star citizen that game raised more money than, than most AAA games and it's still not out yet like i got so many death threats because i called out the dlc for what it is basically just like who the hell pays forty eight thousand dollars for dlc <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the reason, like, who the fuck thought this was a good idea? They're just gaslighting everyone and saying they just did that for money, and they particularly just cherry-picked examples to try and make them seem like they're not the bad guy. Like, this is utterly disgusting and just so stupid. Like, dude, just take the L. Go away. You're never going to work in the video game industry ever again. Like, I feel bad for the developers. They actually gave a shit and tried to do stuff according to this DualShockers app, uh, uh, article but when it comes to those uh the heads those brothers like fuck them like dude they mistreated their staff they treat they treated everyone like garbage like i don't care i believe this article more than i believe anything this piece of toilet paper says so you can see here from the comments below uh let's x out of this who's speaking to isn't the studio closed oh by the way we don't care Abza exactly exactly the studio is closed what do you mean what happens next <laughs> um Big Fry's like, go away, yeah, go away, uh, I'm not gonna touch on that, that's an ad, F fuck off, like, yeah, a lot of people are just like, who are you fooling with this thing? No one believes what you're saying here, it's just utter trash, but, I don't know, I guess they feel like they have something to say now, they have something left to recover, your reputation is destroyed, you have nothing to come back to. Your company is washed. And I don't think any publisher out there will ever want to work with you. Even mobile game development. Like you're just a walk-in uh, radiation canary at this point. But that's what I think. What do you think about this entire situation? I'd love to hear other people's opinion on this. Like for me, I paid $40 for it. And I got a refund. But I still feel like I got freaking like I got the scammed because I'll never get back the time that I spent playing that game no matter how much I made hate uh like hate view in the game and bombarded with negative reception like I played the game it's a piece of garbage so yeah fuck you on this entire thing um so yeah like dislike sub if you want to go the extra mile I am monetized now thankfully but according to these people that makes me instantly dis uh, discredit any of my opinions but if you feel like donating, I do appreciate it. Everyone does uh, help me. And just simply watching the video helps. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye.